Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.com, to another blog and to another podcast. Today we're in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 through 10, which reads, Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. And again in the passage above he says, They shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For everyone who enters God's rest also rests from their work, just as God did from his. That's Hebrews chapter 4, verses 3 through 10. Today we return to our study of Hebrews 4, wherein the writer of Hebrews is addressing the second of five warnings that he gives in the book of Hebrews. The second warning is found in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, which reads, Today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness. In verses 3 and 4 of today's text, we read, Now we who have believed enter that rest, just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. Every Christian who is trusted the Lord Jesus as our Savior, has entered into the rest which was long ago promised to us by God himself. God's rest has, is, and will always be accessed by faith in the God of the Bible. It is through faith that we access justification, which is a one-point-in-time event when we trusted the Lord Jesus to be our Savior. It is also through faith that we access our sanctification, which is a process whereby God begins to change us from the inside out. Sanctification is a process whereby God is changing us from the inside out for our good and for his glory in the lives of others. The point of our justification is to bring us into right relationship with God, whereas the point of our sanctification is to bring us into right fellowship with God. Relationship is the beginning of our personal interaction with Him, whereas sanctification is the continuation of that interaction with God. God's rest is not a rest of inactivity, but a byproduct of His finished work in our daily lives. God has finished the work of justification on our behalf, making us right with him through his Son. He is finishing his sanctifying work in us as we yield our lives to him daily by faith. It is justification that gets us into heaven, and it is sanctification that gets heaven into us right now. We could say that sanctification is the acquisition of God's wisdom into our lives right now. The last sentence in verse 3 and verse 4 provides unique insight into the scenario of the fall of man and God's remedy. And yet his works have been finished since the creation of the world. 
For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. On the seventh day God rested from all his works. Before sin entered the world, God's rest began right after the sixth day of creation. God was infinitely satisfied and he rested. It was at that moment that man could enter into God's rest. God had made man a perfect world wherein man could trust God for everything he needed. The criterion was faith. But Adam and Eve chose not to believe in God. In fact, they chose to believe Satan. They were for the first time defined by something other than God. They were defined by Satan's lies. Immediately, unbelief forfeited the rest of God in man's life. As a result, Adam was made restless. Adam and Eve spent their entire existence trying to avoid God. And the history of the Bible is the effort of God wooing man to himself. In order to do that, God had to do for man what man could not do for himself. God had to render man's sin null and void. And so the Lord Jesus Christ came to earth and addressed man's, mankind's sin problem at the cross. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, mankind can enter into God's justification rest. And since everyone who had not received the free gift of forgiveness through Christ has not entered into God's rest, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. Once we are justified, it is then that we benefit by God's sanctification work. The confusion of these two is what creates most false teaching in this world. In verses 5 through 7, we read, and again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. Therefore, since it still remains for some to enter that rest, and since those who formerly had the good news proclaimed to them did not go in because of their disobedience, God again set a certain day, calling it today. This he did when a long time later he spoke through David, as in the passage already quoted. Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. We, having trusted in the finished work of the Lord Jesus on the cross, are saved because God designed to redeem us before the world was ever created. There's always this side of eternity, a today, with God. There will always be those opportunities on this side of eternity to respond to God's voice of justification and sanctification and to access his grace. We must be vulnerable enough to believe that he is just and he is the justifier of all who believe. In verses 8 through 10 of today's passage, we read, For if Joshua had given them rest, God would not have spoken later about another day. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For anyone who enters God's rest also rests from their works, just as God did from his. God's rest confronts man's performance-based religion. The idea that if we do not perform well enough, he will not accept us or bless us. The greatest salve to this faulty way of thinking is the grace of God. The writer of Hebrews wrote to a group of people who were quite legalistic it was Spurgeon who once said, Grace puts its hand on the boasting mouth and shuts it once for all. And it was Jerry Bridges who brilliantly once wrote, Your worst days are never so bad that you are beyond the reach of God's grace. And your best days are never so good that you are beyond the need of God's grace. The Sabbath rest found in verse 10 
is the rest that ushers us to the place where we cease from all our labors to earn God's favor. In fact, this type of rest causes us to want to do for God. This type of rest causes us to want to pray, read our Bibles, and share the good news with others. These Christian practices, once we have experienced his grace, become get-to things, not got-to things. In Revelation 14, 13, we read, Then I heard a voice from heaven say, Write this, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labor, for their deeds will follow them. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 10 is a reference to that final day when we cease from everything and enter into the presence of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, God's rest is two-pronged. It involves his justification and his sanctification. And the good works that follow us will be the works produced by him. In that day, we will look back and recognize that it was by God's grace that he sought us in our sin, and it was by his grace that we experienced his life, or his definition of all things applied to ours. Then we will proclaim it is all by his grace, all of it. My friends, I trust this blog and this podcast are helping you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.